Hey, smart people. In this video, I'm going to give you some of my very best memory tricks for math. Now, these tricks are generally labeled mnemonics, which is the fancy formal title of memory techniques. It was named after the Greek goddess of memory, Mnemosyne. Here, we're going to look at three different tactics you can use right away. I call this category of memory tricks alphabet soup. One way we're going to use alphabet soup is to look at a list of items to remember and spell a single word from the first letter of each item on a list. Then the second way we're going to use alphabet soup is to create a phrase or a sentence using the initials of each word in our list of operations. And there's a third tactic, but this one is different. We're going to use the length of a word, how many letters it contains, to help us recall strings of numbers. Let's start with one you may already know. It's likely you've seen or heard of this one before. Now let me caution you. Don't dismiss it because you think you already know it. What we're going for here is for you to learn a new tactic, not merely the specific example I'm using. Let's say you have a problem like this. How do you solve it? You must use the order of operations for math. And that is parentheses first, then the exponents, your powers and square roots, etc., multiplication and division, and you're going to go from left to right, and then addition and subtraction. Parentheses, exponents, multiply, divide, add and subtract turns into the nonsense word PEMDAS. But we can turn that nonsense word into a phrase. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Here's one I came up with. Purple earrings make darling accessories, sis. The key here is to take every initial and to turn it into something that's memorable. Undoubtedly, you've used a technique like this before. Now, here's one that puzzles a lot of younger students. Roman numerals. Look, it's one thing to remember them when you're in grade school. It's quite another thing when you're an adult and you haven't worked with them in such a long time. You know, sometimes dates are still written in Roman numerals. So let's look at them. I is the number one. V is the number five. X is 10. L, 50. C, 100. D equals 500. And M equals 1,000. So how can you remember? I, V, X, L, C, D, M. Here's a phrase that I made up. I view x-rays like careful doctors monitor. Here's another phrase. This one I saw commonly used on the internet. I value xylophones like cows dig milk. <laughs> Personally, I like mine better. Now let's look at some techniques for solving word problems. You own a company that manufactures clothing. Your company makes six different kinds of sweatshirts for the winter season. Each year, your company makes 75,000 of each. In the spring, you make four different lighter weight styles and produce 80,000 of each kind. How many sweatshirts does your company make per year? Here's one strategy. First, search the word problem. Then, translate the words into an equation in picture form. Then answer the problem, and lastly, review the solution. The first initial in each of those phrases spells the word star. Here's one that I think is even better. The acronym is CUBES. Circle the numbers, understand what is being asked for, and underline the question. Then box all your clues, math actions, and key words. The E, eliminate unnecessary information. Then the S, solve and show your work. So as we go back and take a look at our word problem, here is what it looks like when we've applied the technique called cubes. Now let's get a little bit more sophisticated and talk about solving equations. Here's the format. Distribute. Multiply the term outside the parentheses by what's inside it. Then you're going to combine like terms with the signs of that term. 
Then you're going to move the variables with inverse operations and then add or subtract using properties of equality. And lastly, multiply or divide using properties of equality. So using the initials D, C, M, A, M, don't call me after midnight. And you might imagine trying to call your math professor and he says to you, hey, don't call me after midnight. Now keep in mind, it's not my intention to teach you how to solve equations with multiple variables. It's only my goal to show you how to recall the system for doing it. Now let's talk about SI prefixes. The International System of Units, SI, is the simplified modern version of the metric system. SI's greatest advantage is that it has only one unit for each type of measurement. That means it's never necessary to convert from one unit to another within the system. And there's no conversion factors for students to memorize. Compare that to having to measure things with totally unrelated units. For example, gold is measured in troy ounces, compared with copper, which is traditionally done in avoir du poids pounds. The power of an electric heater is measured in watts compared to a gas heater, which is labeled in BTU. So the basic six SI prefixes are kilo, hecto, deca, deci, centi, and milli. You can use the phrase, King Henry died drinking chocolate milk. All right, so instead of six, let's take a look at 12 SI prefixes. They are Terra, Giga, Mega, Kilo, Hecto, Deca, and then you've got a base, and then going downwards, Deci, Centi, Milli, Micro, Nano, Pico. So how are you going to remember them along with their exponents? And we're going to go back to our buddy King Henry. The great man, King Henry's dungeon basement, didn't contain many men nor peacocks. And to remember their exponential value, I simply use this. It's as easy as 1, 2, 3, 6, 9, 12. Now, let's up the ante. Here's a brand new technique. This one is for remembering long sequences of numbers, like pi. Now, in truth, you may already have a calculator with the value of pi built in. So, you may not ever need to remember it, but sometimes it's kind of cool. Think of this as an exercise to make and keep your brain really strong. So here are the first 31 digits of pi. Pi equals 3.141592-653-589-793-238-462-643-383-279. Here's how you can remember some of it. We're going to use something called a word length system in which the number of letters in each word compares to a digit. Now this simple one gives pi to seven places. How I wish I could calculate pi. Three, one, four, one, five, nine, two. Now let's do remembering pi to eight places. This is an easy one. May I have a large container of coffee? And you can see it, 31415926. Now let's get a little more ambitious. This longer one is kind of popular with some students. How I like a drink, alcoholic of course, after the heavy lectures involving quantum mechanics. Now if you want to dazzle some of your math friends, or just amuse yourself with being able to remember pi to either 21 or 31 decimal places, post a comment that you want me to send you two little poems that will give you the ability to do it easily. And if you've got some favorite memory tricks for math, please feel free to post them in the comments below and help out some of your fellow viewers. Everyone will appreciate it. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, be sure to subscribe. Hit that little bell icon to be notified every time I release a new video. 
Thanks for joining me and please be sure to check out the notes in the description below this video. I always have a lot of additional educational resources you may find helpful. And I will look forward to having you join me on my other videos.